ಶ್ರೀವಾಸರಿ ಗೋರ್ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ So on this day we want to speak something about the glories of Lord Shiva Mahadev he is described we say Vaishnavam yata shambhu Lord Shambhu is the greatest Vaishnava the greatest devotee at the same time Lord Shiva is not any ordinary devotee but he's actually also the Lord himself he is he's a guna avatar he's in charge of the mode of ignorance and he is also uh involved in the work of annihilation destruction which takes place brahma creates vishnu maintains and shiva annihilates so lord shiva is a very busy man we know something of the glories of lord shiva it is amazing it is inconceivable that the lord himself comes in the form of lord shiva to show how to be a devotee just as chaitanya mahaprabhu is krishna himself is come in the mood of the devotee lord shiva is also god himself and he comes in the mood of a devotee lord shiva told his own wife parvati the importance of chanting the holy name of lord ram that is mentioned in the vishnu sahasranam the mother parvati was going to chant the 1000 names of vishnu but lord shiva told him told her rather that there's no need to chant all these names of lord vishnu you just simply chant the name of lord ram and that is as good as the 1000 names of vishnu So this is the words of Lord Shiva himself. Lord Shiva also tells us the importance of worship of those things in relation to Vishnu. That he tells us that of all kinds of worship, the worship of Lord Vishnu is the highest. But even greater than the worship of Lord Vishnu is the worship of those things in relation to Vishnu. So on this day Shivaratri we are all taking advantage to come and worship lord shiva because lord shiva is very much in relationship to the supreme lord of course lord shiva is worshiped by different kinds of people there are demons like ravana was a great devotee of lord shiva and he took blessings from lord shiva and then vrikashura also was another demon who took blessings from lord shiva but there are also great devotees of lord shiva just like in shrimad bhagavatam we can read about the prachetas and they met lord shiva and they were given that song chanted by lord shiva to recite and by their association with lord shiva and by their recitation of that song sung by lord shiva the prachetas also became great devotees in the times of chaitanya mahaprabhu Sanatana Goswami was also another great devotee of Lord Shiva and we can see Lord Shiva glorified very much in the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita by Sanatana Goswami So sometimes as devotees we are a little careful about worship of Shiva because we know that often people worship Lord Shiva and they think that Shiva is the supreme god and they think ultimately god is formless i remember on one occasion when i was distributing literature in europe one time a young man came to me and he said i know krishna cannot be god krishna took birth 
Lord Shiva is God. And then he went on to tell me, Lord Shiva is light. And so people have these different conceptions about God, who is the Supreme Lord. Of course, Lord Shiva does appear in the different material elements. We'll explain about that in a little while. But uh, people also generally who worship Lord Shiva, they, they have also many material desires. They want to fulfill their material desires. And they know that Lord Shiva is asutosh. He can be easily pleased. So people like to come and take the blessings from Lord Shiva. However, we're reminded that while Lord Shiva is easily pleased, he can also be easily angered. And that can work against it. you. You may want to take blessings from Lord Shiva, but if we do it for the wrong purpose, then it can bring disaster on our own selves. And we see, of course, that disaster also happened to different people like Ravan and uh, Vrikasura also, that their benedictions which they took from Lord Shiva did not allow them to make a success of their life. So Lord Shiva, one time in London, we went to a Hindu temple with Srila Prabhupada and they had a, there was a big picture, one of Brahma, one of Vishnu and one of Shiva. And Srila Prabhupada said in that lecture, he said, a devotee of Krishna not only offers his respects to Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, a devotee of Krishna will offer respects even to a tiny insect like an ant because they will see the Lord in the heart of all living entities. So Lord Shiva is God, but Prabhupada pointed out he is God of the material world. As we said, Brahma creates, Vishnu maintains, and Shiva annihilates. These are the Purusha avatar. These are the rather the, the, the avatars for the work of maintaining this material world. So Prabhupada said, Lord Shiva is God of the material world. Uh, he is not God of the spiritual world. So we offer our respects to Lord Shiva, certainly. We, and we also pray to Lord Shiva for his blessings because one of Lord Shiva's duties is that to control the false ego. Lord Shiva is the master of the false ego. And the false ego appears in the three different modes. There is false ego in goodness, false ego, ego in passion, and false ego in ignorance. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 10th canto, you have Maharaj Yudhisthira inquiring about how is it that the devotees of Lord Shiva are so opulent? Lord Shiva himself seems to live a life of poverty, but his devotees are very opulent. And in contrast, Lord Narayan, Lord Vishnu is very opulent. But the devotees of Vishnu are often poverty stricken. So Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to understand this contradiction and this same question came up again in Bhagavatam when Sukadev Goswami was questioned by Maharaj Parikshit. Maharaj Parikshit also wanted to understand this. So it, it was explained that Lord Shiva is the master of the false ego. And that false ego manifests in 16 elements of the material creation. There is a mind and the five Mahabhutis, earth, water, fire, air, ether, and the five knowledge acquiring senses, the eyes, the ears, the, no the nose, the tongue and the skin, and then the five working senses our hands and our legs, our generating organ and evacuating organ and our voice. These are the 16 elements of the material creation. And Lord Shiva is responsible for the creation of these different elements. And when a devotee of Lord Shiva worships Lord Shiva through these different elements, then 
he is benedicted with the different opulences of these elements. Lord Shiva has his different representations in each of these different elements. There are different lingas, just like there's a Jyoti linga and there's an Akash linga. These are different manifestations of Lord Shiva. And just like we have a Shiva linga here, the manifestation of Lord Shiva in the linga form. And so when we worship these different elements, then the devotees of Lord Shiva receive benedictions of material opulence because Lord Shiva is the proprietor of these different elements. So he bestows benedictions, bestows opulences on his devotees who worship him. On the other hand, the devotees of Lord Vishnu and Lord Krishna, Lord Vishnu is tr transcendental to the material elements. So when the devotees take to worship of Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna, then it's a different situation. He bestows transcendental opulences on his devotees. The opulence of the Vaishnavas is different from the opulence of the Shivites. The Vaishnavas, they enjoy opulence of peace and tranquility, uh, humility, freedom from greed and lust. But the devotees of Lord Shiva, they don't have that kind of opulence. Their opulence is limited to the material world. In this way, the difference was explained between uh, Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu. Now we can understand more of the importance of Lord Shiva in Ramlila. In Ramayana, we read that when Lord Rama was searching after his wife, he found out that Mother Sita was being held captive in Lanka. And so before he went to Lanka, Lord Rama, first of all, worshipped Lord Shiva. We see Lord Rama sitting at, the, at, the, uh, at Rameshwaram there in the southern tip of India, and he was sitting looking across the Indian Ocean, and he sat there, and he worshipped Lord Shiva. So people sometimes question that if Lord Rama is God, why does he worship Shiva? Shiva must be greater than Lord Rama. So there are two ways to explain this. One way is the way in which Srila Prabhupada answered. Srila Prabhupada said, Lord Shiva was telling Lord Rama that, uh, rather Lord Rama was telling Lord Shiva that I'm going to kill your devotee. He wanted to inform him. Another reason why Lord Rama worshipped Lord Shiva was also to set the example that Lord Rama is Maryada avatar, that he wants to teach people by his example. Therefore, he wants to establish the principle for all common men that they should worship Lord Shiva. We see generally the temples of Lord Shiva are much more in number than the temples of Vishnu or the temples of Krishna. Just like here in Navadvip Dham, when we go around on Parikrama, we often find different temples of Lord Shiva in different parts of the Dham. And so people are surprised, why is it there are so many temples of Lord Shiva? And the reason is, this was a benediction given to Shiva by Lord Krishna. That Lord Krishna wanted to see his devotee worshipped. Therefore, he gave the benediction that Lord Shiva would have more temples and more devotees than him. In the same way, Lord Rama was encouraging ordinary people in the worship of Lord Shiva. And this is why Lord Rama performed this worship of Shiva before going to Lanka. So the worship of Lord Shiva is something which we have to do as devotees before we start Parikrama. That on the first day of the Parikrama, we go to the Yoga Peeth. And at the Yoga Peeth, at the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there is Shitrapal Shiva. Because one of Lord Shiva's important services which he has been given 
is to be the guardian of the Holy Dham. And in order for us to enter into the Holy Dham, we first of all must go to Shitrapal Shiva and beg him, beg his blessings, take his permission that we can enter into that Holy Dham. Without the blessings of Lord Shiva, then we, have, we will not be able to actually see the Holy Dham. This is a procedure in performing Parikrama. I think on the 27th, when we begin the Parikrama, that's the first thing we do. Early in the morning, six o'clock in the, in the morning, immediately after Mongol Arti, we all come down to the Yoga Peeth, and there we, we uh, take the blessings of Lord Shiva that we can enter into this dam of Navatweep and see the Holy Land. Lord Shiva also performs an important service in the Kali Yuga, and that was coming in the form of Shankar Acharya. As Shankar Acharya, he came and preached the Mayavadi philosophy. Indeed, it is stated in the Puranas, Lord, Sh Lord Shiva says, uh, Mayavada Asat Shastram Prachanam Bodham Uchate. Lord Shiva was telling his wife Parvati, he's saying that the Mayavada Asat Shastra, that the philosophy of Mayavada is a temporary philosophy. And he described it as Prachanam Bodham, covered Buddhism. So Lord Shiva was telling his wife that in the Kali Yuga, I will come in the form as a Brahmana and I will preach the Mayavadi philosophy. And by preaching the Mayavadi philosophy, I will bewilder the minds of the atheistic people. This Mayavada philosophy, of course, in the form of Shankaracharya, he was able to drive Buddhism out of India. Before Shankaracharya appeared, India was full of Buddhism. Everywhere there were Buddhist monasteries, the worship of Buddha was going on. Even if you go to Mathura, if you happen to one day ever visit the museum in Mathura, you will see that in the museum of Mathura, it is full of, Buddhist, of Buddhas. Different Buddha idols are all there. And they're all left over from that period. Mathura used to be the capital of Buddhism. And even Jagannath, people were worshipping Jagannath, thinking these are forms of Buddha. So there was so much Buddhism spread all over India. And it was thanks to Shankaracharya that he was able to defeat Buddhism. Buddhism, of course, is a Gnostic philosophy. It's an atheistic philosophy. So Shankaracharya very cleverly defeated the Buddhas. The Buddhas were preaching that the absolute truth is zero. But Shankaracharya preached it's not zero, it's one. So only a little change from nothing to one. Buddhas were, the Buddhists were teaching that everything is void, nothing is real. But Shankaracharya taught that, that there's actually one. Everything is Brahman. Brahm, Sarvam Kauvidam Brahma. Shankaracharya quoted that, that everything is Brahman. So Shankaracharya did this wonderful service on the order of the Lord. It was on the order of the Lord that Shankaracharya did this work, preaching this Mayavada philosophy, which is Buddhism, which is just another form of Buddhism in a covered form. And so we are very much indebted to Lord Shiva. We are coming here today also to seek his blessing. The observance of Shivaratri, it is described that for a Vaishnava, it is not compulsory that they have to observe Shivratri. Sometimes they may observe, sometimes they may not. But it's appropriate here, of course, because we have Shiva Linga and, and because Samantini Devi is here, so we're having a festival every year at this place. We remember, of course, Lord Shiva's wonderful pastimes like drinking, drinking the poison from the churning of the milk ocean that was also another example of Lord Shiva's compassion. And because he drank that poison, then he became Nilachala. 
his throat became blue colored. And because he drank that poison, therefore he was given that crescent moon symbol on his head because that cools him down. Because having drunk poison, his body became very hot from the heat of the poison. So that crescent moon on his head cools down the body of Lord Shiva. And we also know that Lord Shiva's hair is kept wet because on his head he caught Mother Ganges. Mother Ganges was requested by Maharaj Bhagirat to come to this earth planet. But Mother Ganga was concerned that the force of my water on the earth planet will be too great. It will upset the position of the earth in the universe. But Maharaj Bhagirat said, no, Lord Shiva will catch your waters in his hair and it will come from the hair of Lord Shiva. So we always see that in the different pictorial representations of Lord Shiva. You can see the Ganga flowing onto his head and the Ganges comes down from the lotus feet of Vishnu onto the head of Lord Shiva and then flows down through Bharat Varsh. So this is all just some of the work of Lord Shiva in his service to the Supreme Lord. Lord Shiva also has, of course, his own Sampradaya. There is a Vishnu Swami Sampradaya. The head of that Vishnu Swami Sampradaya, original Adi Guru, is Lord Shiva himself. So those who are wise, who follow Lord Shiva, they will follow through the bona fide Sampradaya. Usually, of course, we find that the, the people who follow Lord Shiva, either they just worship Lord Shiva to get some material benedictions or they're atheist. Uh, during the fight between the followers of Lord Shiva and the followers of Daksha, there was cursing. The cursing put on each other side. The followers of Lord Shiva were cursed that they will all become atheists. And the followers of Daksha, who were all Brahmanas, the followers of Brihaspati, they were cursed that these Brahmanas will be practitioners of dull rituals. And we find that actually both curses are evidence, they're both present today. That generally those people who are followers of Lord Shiva are atheistic. Another person I met while I was distributing books one day, he told me his mantra was, in the beginning he said he was chanting Om Namo Shivaya, but he said now he's able to chant, now he recites Aham Shivaya. So in the beginning, he was offering his respects to Lord Shiva. But ultimately, his purpose was to become Shiva. And so this is another atheistic idea that we are all God, that we can become God. However, there is a bona fide teaching given by Lord Shiva. And we find that also in our scriptures, in Srimad Bhagavatam, we find all of this information that Lord Shiva is actually the greatest Vaishnava and he encourages all of us to chant the holy name of the Supreme Lord. Okay, so we will stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki.